What is a sham simplicity? Is that so difficult to be simple? Wow. <laughs> it has become difficult. It has become, it has become difficult. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be because if uh, we have all the natural settings, um, uh, natural settings in the sense family, friends, and the child grows up within this environment, it should be really simple. Very simple. Yeah, but then now uh, work life, urbanization, changes, the pace, the time, the economical structures, yeah. it is not possible to be so simple in this urban environment. It's not supposed to. Not possible. So, I mean, <laughs> even for people okay, that uh, practice yoga. Yes. Okay. Yes. Maybe when they come to India, yes. right, they practice yoga for one month, two yes. months, three months, and yes. then it's difficult when they go back to um, go on practicing yoga because the rhythm in the West is totally different. Sure, the rhythm is extremely uh, hectic, fast-paced. Uh, in uh, here, it's so slow, you know, yeah. and it's just yeah. opposite of uh, the yes. urban. Uh, opposite, really opposite. Yes. And when you are tired of yoga, you just go by the sea and you have a swing. Yes. Swing. Yes, and you float higher because <laughs> <laughs> because you, you are doing yoga plus the sea. Yes. 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 It's nice weather, but the thing is that you can also culture this. It becomes uh, you become more aware that um, you know there is stress, there is tension. So slowly as you are doing yoga, you become more and more aware of your, yourself. Yes. And uh, many, many yogis in India always say that um, because we lose awareness of our selfhood, we just give our energy to the external world. Yeah. And then we become very stressed out because we cannot come back. Yeah. And uh, so if you spend some time with yourself, anything like, uh, like you know, like what you just said, like you, you drive or you yes, ride yes. and then you come centered or <coughs> swim. But in yoga, the it's advantage nice. is you are also including your physical nature, yeah. your body, yeah. your breath. Yeah. And so it allows you to go deeper and it allows you um, ability to control all these uh, aspects. Okay. So therefore, yoga is... Uh, popular because it can deal with these issues yes, really. Yes, I mean very, very popular. Yes. Above all in the West world. Yes. In the Western world, uh, yoga is more social. Yeah. You know, it's like the replacing the lack of a family. If there is no family, so at least you got a yoga center and yeah. you can say, hello, how yes, are you? Yes, yes. You know, so. Social ways. Yeah, social ways. In the, stay with other people. Yes, mm. yes. And in the, in the Eastern world, there is this metaphysics, the philosophy, the spiritual cultures to go with. Yeah. So sometimes uh, the West and the East don't understand each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because... Almost all the time, almost <laughs> all the time. <laughs> That's true. Yes, because of this uh, emphasis. Yeah. They highlight this and in the East they highlight that. And I try to make sure that they understand each other. Yeah. This, this my my goal. My goal is to make uh, humanity understand each other. Right. Because I think that uh, underneath everything, it's like uh, plasticine is human beings, yes. you know? Yes. And uh, if the human beings can understand themselves, they understand everybody else. But don't you think there should be a meeting? I mean, as far as the new man, the possibility of a new man is concerned, that there should be a meeting between East and West. There should be, that Osho long ago emphasized on this and he, he said, you know, fusion yes. of two cultures and blah, blah, blah. And uh, there should be. I think uh, by deconstructing ourselves, it is much more possible. Yes. You know, yes, we, we drop all the yeah, layers of differences. All the yes. Uh, drop all the conditioning. I'm, I belong to this religion, you belong to this yes, religion. Yes, yes. This is conditioning. Yes. And uh, also it is space oriented, you know. It all the, and also we study as yes, history. Many, many books on history tells us that uh, history of humankind starts with Saint, uh, Fran uh, Francis Drake, Captain Francis Drake, uh, Drake uh, yeah. or uh, Captain yeah. Cook or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But if you look at the uh, languages, you know that um, human interaction has been earlier than uh, the sailors. You know, yes. and, uh, if you look at Latin, one of my friend, uh, 
from US, he was studying on the difference between Latin and Sanskrit. Yeah. He's come to conclusion that there are 6,000 words that are common between Latin and Sanskrit. Because apparently all the, English, uh, the European languages, they come from Sanskrit. Yes, I mean, yes, they are the, almost the same with little modifications of grammar. Yes. So, if, if it is that, then there was human communication much earlier yeah. than just now, yeah. you know. So, we have to revise our thinking of history, you know. If now, at the moment, history is just um, East against West. Yes, yes. <laughs> or yes. West against East. Yes, or Christians against Muslims. Well, yeah, something or like this. Yes. Always some or other. Against uh, Hinduism. Yeah, something. But, uh, all are fictions yeah. because they're all talking the same thing. Yes. <laughs> Everybody's yes. talking about Wasting the soul. <laughs> if, <laughs> there, if there is a God, it's one. One, yes. I mean, yes. Time, it's no? totally. To him with different names. <laughs> yeah, like the chair. We have many names for this, but yeah. we all sit on it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that the yeah. most uh, nice thing about the new awareness that's coming from the West, because I, I really think the West is ahead because uh, it's the economical drive. Yes. And so... And also for, uh, for technology is quite... Yes, bad. yes, technology and science and all that. So it is driving ahead and the rest of the East is also following there, you know. And so it's a nice thing to see that the West is having m more than just economical ideas. It's looking into social ideas, psychological ideas. Now, now it's getting into spiritual ideas for the last 30 years at least. And it's getting more and more and more in that way. And so it's also bringing a lot of awareness in the Eastern world, yeah. you know. Uh, the Asians themselves, like in, uh, Indians themselves, never did yoga. Okay. <laughs> okay. What do you mean when you say awareness? Because also here in this world, there are a lot of misunderstanding. Yes. Because awareness? Yes. Okay. What is it exactly to be aware? Mm. Okay, to be aware is to be knowing, to be having a more in-depth knowledge of things. I dis distinguish the word consciousness and awareness. Consciousness, I always put it towards like universal consciousness, absolute consciousness, infinite consciousness. They're a little different. And awareness, because I leave awareness to the human uh, nature or the sentient nature. And the consciousness is the underlying factor. Okay. So, I mean, uh, for example, Vipassana meditation. Yes, right? yes. You're supposed to be aware of your breath. Yes. Okay, to yes. be aware of your breath, or yes. if you're walking also, to be aware of your steps. Yes, okay. yes. You cannot say to be conscious of your breath. Yeah, you can say, but that's a language problem. Yes. It's Engli English yes. language. Yes. In the Sanskrit uh, language, you have for the word consciousness, you have chit, or, you know, sat chit ananda vigraha. Um, yeah. So chit yeah. is the consciousness, and uh, if you look at it seriously, then chit takes you into the Brahman, uh -huh. and the idea of Brahman or absolute, and how the attribute of the absolute is actually this yeah. awareness, this consciousness, yeah. and from there the whole uh, genesis occurs. So that's the same as God and genesis and many languages, Allah and yeah. genesis and blah blah blah, but awareness. Yes, I, I use the word only for human references, sentient, sentient awareness. When did you start uh, your journey with yoga? I mean, Well, I was with uh, my grandparents and I grew up with my grandparents in the jungle. Yeah, you were like, <laughs> you were like, so totally in the, free. Yeah, totally, totally free. Totally free. So in the jungle, I used to follow my grandfather. So every day he goes to this temple, you know, like an igloo, small temple. Yeah. And then I used to go and play in this temple. And then slowly, when I became about 10 years old, then he started teaching me. All right. Yes. Okay. So he started to teach also yoga? Or? Yeah, yeah, yoga. Yoga. Yeah. yeah. He started with the asanas first, you know, few asanas like this. And then slowly, slowly, he started teaching me Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. Then slowly, he taught me massage. Like this, yeah, yeah. yes. And then a little bit later on the philosophy. Yeah, but okay, according to you, is yoga still uh, um, the right method, method for modern man? Yoga is, okay, yoga is everywhere, you know, it, it was everywhere. If we we'll go back to, say, uh, 
the Roman culture, yeah. the Greek culture, they all had it, but uh, they've forgotten <laughs> because of the changes, the industrialization, um, many factors, you know, the institutions that be came out of the guild became over specialists and then it all changed and then the wars really changed the whole entire modern world. So you, if you look at it, as I was uh, we were talking the other day, the works of Patanjali and the works of Marcus Aurelius is same. For me, it is same. And this book on meditation is the same as Patanjali. And the practices that were um, going on in the Western world, the yoga, modified because of um, the Olympics. You know, there were several layers of modification. Uh, it became gymnastic today. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was definitely I, from my study. I'm studying this for a long time. Yeah. And I'm very convinced that uh, gymnastic was yoga yes. in the past. <laughs> yes, and it's changed now. Yeah. It changed to become uh, a sport, you know, a competitive sport. You forgot the, the, the philosophy. Yes, behind, the philosophy, you know, yes. Exactly, exactly. So you think that when uh, Diogenes met uh, Alexander, Alexander the Great, yes. you know that Alexander went yes. to the river to see him, Yes. and he was standing and covering the sun and Diogenes said, can you move please a little bit because yes. you're covering the sun. Yes. He was a yoga man. Yes, yes, 100%. 100%. 100%. Doing yoga. 100% <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you look at all the uh, traditions, even uh, in Germany, there, the Essene uh, in Middle East to Germany, they were actually doing yoga. They were actually cultivating meditation. Okay. Not in the limited sense of meditation, not in the physical sense of meditation, but as a metaphysical science. But it changed, all changed. India also changing in the same way. Yes. We are yeah. becoming acrobats and we are coming that way, you know. We will soon be competing with you. Sure. Again, when you shift, you shift it outside. You lift and shift it outside. Like this way. Yeah. And from here, you move, you place yourself here, and then you shift. Yeah? So, yes. And please look at your heels, yeah? And your hips inside. Yeah, the half moon, yeah? Let's stretch this way. It's a half moon like this. Is the, the <laughs> purpose of the different asanas to just to bring you uh, to become aware? To the, what are the purposes of the asanas, the different asanas? The, the purpose is to actually, if you understand the theory of prana, the concept of uh, chi in the Chinese world or ki in the Japanese world, the purpose of asana is to actually culture that, culture that to your advantage. So how your chi flows in the body gives you the health. Yeah. And uh, the no flow makes your, the ill yes, health. Yes. So the purpose of asana is to actually culture all these things. All right. And it's a little bit complicated study because so the, the main purpose is that man, first of all, has to be healthy. You have to be healthy because, um, okay, okay, let us go into the idea of karma. Yeah. The idea of karma as now is like a, like a snooker table where we bang the ball and it goes here and there yeah. and comes back to yeah. you or something yeah. like this. Right. But in, in the traditional systems, the idea of karma is from God down. Yeah. So when we say God, it, let us say infinite or absolute universe, universe what many okay. words we can yeah. use. Yeah. Yeah. And downwards, until I become a human person, or a cat, or a camel, or a bat, and that is what they call karma, right. in the traditional way. Right. So when you look at the eyes, my eyes can see colors, the buffalo, it seems, doesn't see color. So but it's evolution. Yes. The evolution of yes. the yes. living. Yes, exactly. So when the buffalo doesn't see color, I don't believe so much, but because whenever I wear a red t-shirt, the buffalo chases me. <laughs> but surely the, the, the color and the receptors, the, the, my, my genetic makeup makes me experience this reality. So if a, if a bat, it doesn't have eyes, but it has sense of hearing yeah. and the um, so everything has different level of consciousness or awareness. Awareness, yeah. awareness. Same consciousness according to these philosophies, but awareness shifts because yes. of your karma. All right. So then how to overcome the limitations of this karma, to overcome these limitations, you have to live your life according to these philosophies to totality. Your potential should be realized.
So if you want to actualize these potentialities, then it, you, ha you have to really uh, be healthy. Yes. So that you have yes. a very healthy identity. All right. And that healthy identity is called Dharma. Okay. And the potential is called Artha. Th dharma is also religion or no? Dharma is not means, religion. Means the rule. No, no, no. Actually, it means your, your selfhood, your purpose in the whole cosmos. All right. You know, the karmic cosmos. Yeah, yeah. And by actualizing your purpose in this karmic cosmos, you actually have a central role All right. rather than like the Da Vinci's man, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah like yeah, this. Yeah. You have the freedom, you have the completeness, the wholeness, and that is what I think Da Vinci painted yeah. or sketched. He's a philosopher. He's not uh, just a school artist. No, 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 yes. You know, he he's many things. Yes, yeah, and he was representing the school of thought. And so I believe that that whole is what we are trying to be. And by realizing the wholeness, we actually escape the rebirth. Okay. By living your life, you escape the rebirth. Yes. Not like the idea of where you detach from life. If you detach from life, you will come back for sure, yeah. according to these astras. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to live your life happily, fully, yes. express, yes. enjoy and enrich yourself. Okay. You know? To reach the goal yes. for which the universe put you. Yes, yeah? yes. Yeah. You are the universe, so you are the part and yes. puzzle. Yeah. If it is the absolute, there is no division in the absolute. Yes. You know? Please keep your body as straight as possible, yeah? because it is to stretch your pectoral muscles. So keep your body straight. If you curve, it doesn't work the same way. Uh, this whole standing posture is to culture body alignment. Like slowly we move the body structures uh, bit by bit into aligning itself. Right. And then in the long run, by doing this, we also um, culture the bone density okay. because uh, the structure of the bones and become yes, more the dense. healthier, yeah, yes. The healthier. And so we use this, uh, what we call upasana or vyayama, mm -hmm. for this reason. Uh -huh. Because um, it is actually preparing one to go into the asanas. And the asanas, which we will do after, yeah. which will go into culturing the prana or chi. Okay. So yeah. the, the energy, the energy, yeah, the energy yeah. system. Okay, Shan, yeah. and can you just tell me, please, what is exactly the meaning of the word Tantra? Because here in the West we are very confused about. Usually we think that Tantra has to do with sex. I mean, we are not clear about this thing. Okay. Tantra is actually understanding this consciousness that we are talking about, yeah. this absolute consciousness, and how to take uh, advantage of this, and how to understand the whole metaphysics of this. And this metaphysics, like it is like subtle. We don't see it, like oxygen is subtle. Yes. We don't see it, but we yes, live. It we, we, we is important. Is. Yeah. Yes. So something like that. Tantrics understand this essential uh, nature, and they live by this essential nature as the way of life. So um, by recognizing all these uh, subtle, subtle, subtle aspects, layers, yeah. aspects, and they start expressing from that rather than just the definition of a human being from this body. If it is just a body, we cannot explain many things. We can't even explain heartbeat. Yes. We can't even yes. explain yes. 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 <laughs> many, many no, things. No. <laughs> so, practically not. Exactly. Only just one and a half square meter of uh, flesh. Yes, yes, that's yes. All. And that's all. And the blood that is flowing. Yes, like a but diesel okay. truck. And it's, like, it's like when the sun is coming through the window and yes. you see all the dust, you know? Yes, yes. I mean, exactly. you can't see it, but True. sometimes... Because of light, yes. you see it. Yes, yes. So similarly, when the tantrics are talking about, their life is based on this concept. In the Western world, because of psychologists like Freud, uh, he got the idea of this consciousness from uh, Schopenhauer. Yeah. And so he got excited. And Schopenhauer got this idea from the Veda, actually. You're studying the Vedas. Yeah and uh, Frederick Schelling, all these uh, German uh, philosophers, so they call. And from Freud then came Jung, and Jung and all these guys started talking about the idea of the human consciousness in another way. What we call awareness, they call consciousness. Yeah. And from there then they have the idea of psychology and sociology. So in the, let us say in the 70s, though it is the origin is way, way to Freud and Jung, in the 70s feminism 
started introducing ideas of uh, sexual freedom because um, they felt that men repressed their freedom. In thousands of years, sure. Exactly. So they wanted to express outside these limitations. So they started using ideas from yoga, tantra, so that they can free these, uh, the fear-ridden human being. And also played a very central role in this, you know, yes. to put yes. awareness yes. to the whole world. So they became active. Yes, yes. No more passive. No. Yes. They became active and exactly. they wanted to believe their potential. Yes. Oh and their sexual potential as well, because they don't want to be just uh, put into a box by yeah. the ancient male ideas. But these ancient male ideas are also not really male ideas. It is institutional ideas. It is not the fault of men. It is the fault of institutions. Yeah, but I mean, the institutions were made by men. No, men, were, men became the victim of institution also, uh -huh. you know. So this we have to think very carefully, otherwise the gender war goes on. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody is fighting this war yes, forever. Yes, I like yes. this war to stop. Yes, I mean, men and women. <laughs> yeah, any, along, yes, yeah. anything that becomes a big force, men can't control. Like in India, we can't control motorbike, we can't control trucks, we can't control anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> we are very, very uh, new to machines yeah. and we have a problem with machines, you know. Machines stick Indian men away. <laughs> so similarly, um, in the Western world, uh, institutions took control of the men. And they also became the victim of the institutions. And then slowly the woman became victim of everything. Yeah. And so to overcome this, they started introducing um, psychological uh, uh, workshops yeah. in the 70s, like based on Jung's ideas. Yeah. And from there, they started making like, you know, the, the idea of monogamy was very restrictive for many persons in the urban world because the relationships wouldn't last and economy, many, many things. You know all these things. And then as they started addressing these problems, they realized that the biological uh, functions was very important to address. And sexuality became the prominent aspect. Because and before it was a taboo. Then. Yes, it was, it was a complete taboo. It was repressed, yes. And now that they wanted to relieve this uh, uh, feminist world or the feminine world from these uh, taboos and repressions, they used ideas from Tantra into sexual okay. happiness. Okay. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, it comes also with the concept that you said before that if yoga is just to develop your potential fully, yes. I yes. mean, you have to also to use sex. Yes. So that is the base of your. Yes. Right. Exactly, because you cannot ignore it. Yeah, you cannot ignore you cannot, or repress it. Yeah, ignoring is repressing, yes. it's, it's guilt yeah. or fear. Yeah. If, if you're not having guilt and fear, you will not abuse it, you will not ignore it, no. and you will live it. Yeah. By living it, you honor the other human being. By honoring the other human being, you are honoring your dharma. Yeah. And by honoring your dharma, you have an, as we said, actual reason in the galaxy. Yeah. You know? yeah. Otherwise, we don't have the reason in the galaxy, and we are always quarreling with each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so <laughs> so, we, when we have the we whole... We cannot live with the other, but we cannot stay without the other. Uh, yes, right. yes, because we fail to understand the finer aspects of life. Yes. And I think now with the new millennium science, things are shifting in the West. Yeah. You know, there are many, many now good authors are writing about the new millennium science and this um, direction of spirituality. Yeah. So, they are slowly dropping the Newton and Descartes' views and going into quantum mechanics and all this kind of stuff, yeah. which comes closer to the ancient philosophies. Yeah. It's also, you know, the, the fact is that we all think that uh, philosophy is Eastern, Eastern is like wholesome. It's not true. Even the Christianity of the past was a spiritual yeah. culture. Yeah. But unfortunately, the misreadings that went along with it and the fear and the guilt made it fearful of Christianity yeah. today. Yes. Please place your feet together. Yeah. Now inhale, and as you exhale, please bring both knees towards your chest for your Purnavati Anasana. Yeah. And totally relax. Yeah, it's very important that you relax your whole self. Please relax your face. Please relax your neck muscles. Please relax your back muscles. Just totally let go and sense the whole back relax. Please relax your shoulders, relax your chest, 
just sense your chest relax. Relax your belly. Relax your legs. Your feet and toes. Just totally let go and sense them all relax. Now please grab your toes and flow into your Akhandasana. Gently straighten your knees and you'll be in the right posture. It's wonderful. Totally relax and keep your knees as straight as possible. Now please drop your knees by your sides for your Supta Piditasana. That's wonderful. Just totally relax. And just be in your own sacred space, yeah? Just completely let go, relax, and allow the body to meditate. But since you are talking about quantum, yes, right? yes. let's say the quant quantum leap yes. is a jump. Yes. Okay, but yoga is a method that um, is a process. Yes, so a process in the consciousness. When, yes. yes, and when you make the jump, mm. if you are a quantum, when you jump... Yes, by letting go of all the karmic uh, limitations, yeah. the identification with the finite, the little, little things of life, yeah. and going into um, an awareness of the consciousness, the ultimate consciousness, it is possible to jump into a, a better uh, awareness of life. See, in, in Tantra and Yoga, time is almost an illusion. Because time, even psychologists, they say, our perception of time is like we are going in a truck and the trees are coming to me. Yeah. Or we sit at the back of the truck and the trees are going away from me. But in real life, this, uh, this is an, almost an illusion, you let now, us say. now science, they, I mean, they say the same, you know? Yes. Because Einstein was, when it was, had to explain to the people, the normal people, what, uh, what is the, the relativity of time. Yes. He was, used this example and say, try to stay on a, on a stall yes. for one hour. Yes. <laughs> yes. You can go to sit on your sofa yes. with your lover, <laughs> and by ending, you see the two hours are not the same. Yes, true. So, it is true what you're saying, it's true. He, he's what he call, he's a very good thinker anyway. Yeah. He's the modern thinker of our time. Yeah. And uh, it is true. And all, when we take all this into consideration, then the, the emphasis shouldn't be on time, it should be on the quality of life. You know? Yes. When we think about the quality of life and we emphasize on life, then the quantum yes. leap is possible. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Time is a limitation. Yes. 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 But you become upset. I mean, the Western world has become upset with time because they, they think that there is only one life. So, I mean, you have to do everything, everything. Within one life. In 70 years. Yes. But oh. Omar Khayyam says so beautifully. He says, if you came from nothing, don't worry. You will go back to nothing. <laughs> you go back to nothing and you come back to not from to nothing. Know <laughs> yes. It's so the don't. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's just, the, the rest is just an illusion. Yes. You know? Yes. But the, the modern problem that I call, I don't call it Western problem, but I call it the, yeah, the you know, even Japan, yes. you know, all yeah. the modern centers, yeah. Singapore, everyone has this functionality problem. Yeah. We have to be functional. And that's the, where we get the idea and habit of time. And if we drop this, I think we have uh, better health and we can focus on our enrichment of ourselves. Yeah. Shen, does yoga help also not to be so afraid of death? Yes, that is very, very important because like you just before said, um, very nicely you said that uh, when um, we are uh, thinking about life, within this frame, this, this dimension, and we uh, have nothing but one life. You just said that. Yes. And in this one life, we just have no, f no hope for another thing, so we become desperate. Desperate. Yeah? <laughs> so in the... In the just to in buy a gun <laughs> and shoot. <laughs> yes. yes, but in this yogic philosophy, you've got like millions of lifetimes. Yes. But I'm, same, I'm sure that is also the idea of the Western philosophy. Because when they're talking about the idea of the God is infinite, I'm sure God is not a person. Yes. It's, a, yes. it's yes. infinite. Yes. It's infinite consciousness. And if it is infinite consciousness, then there is an infinite uh, life because you are part and parcel of Him. Yeah. You know? You are a reflection of this God. So if it is the reflection of this uh, idea, then, as we said, time is an illusion. Yeah. 
then there also we have the possibility of uh, infinite structure and that overrides the idea of limitation, finite and death. Yeah. But mainly also because we are completely identified, we think that we are the body, we are the emotions, yes. we are the mind, yes. and that means so there is not a witness. No, and that is the limitation. And that is the limitation. That's a limitation. Our awareness is focused only to our, yeah. our body. Yes. And uh, this is, like you said earlier on, yeah. this is because in the early times there was a hate to the body. And there was overemphasis to the intellectual. Yes. And uh, that was in the 1800s, condemning, 1700s, yes, condemning, condemning, the body, condemning the body. Now it's just the other way around. Yes. We only now worship the body yes. and condemn the brain. Yes. <laughs> so yes, if you have brain, it's no good. <laughs> So it's, it should be a good mix, it's no? a, a little bit of body. Exactly, of exactly. Yeah. When we balance this, and that's why I'm saying that the new millennium science, I hope it's, yeah. you know, with that the nanotechnology yeah. and the computer and all this, yeah. there is a hope that we can understand that we are different from machines yeah. and hope to understand we are a wholesome being. And we can, once we start looking at ourselves as different from machines and we start looking at ourselves, then we project to others that they are human beings. So I always tell in the yoga class, please don't treat your body as an object. Because if you treat your body as an object, you will treat everybody else as an object, yes. So to free yourself first. To be respectful to yourself, your body. yes. And then you will honestly be able to honor another human yes. being. Otherwise it's just words so of... You have to love yourself. Yes, so you have to. There's no escape from Apparently, this. Apparently, I mean, it looks like you have to love the other, but yes. if you don't love yourself, you cannot do that. Yes, you love yourself and then you love others. Yeah. And both are equally important. <laughs> you cannot deny one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you deny one, I think it doesn't work. Yes. Place your feet far apart for your pr prasiritasana. Keep your knees as straight as possible, your toes curl inwards. Interlace your ankles and place them behind your neck. Hold the posture as relaxed as possible. Yoga is, I always say yoga is the only science that teaches the body to meditate. Just allow the body to meditate, just relax. And Shen, and what kind of people are coming to you? I mean, wow, all sorts of people. You know, we really have all sorts of people and from nearly every country, from Portugal to New Zealand. It's funny. And, and yeah, it's very interesting because everybody is looking for, I think the human being is looking for answers. And they are genuinely looking for answers. You know, in the past they are looking at ideas. Yeah. Now they are really looking for answers. They're not interested real, in that. Yeah, yeah. Something real. something real, something that they can hold in their lives, something that can, they can use. And uh, so we get all sorts of people, all age group also. I have from 14 years old. Yeah, I'm so young. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and to like the uh, oldest was like 60 years old. 60? 60. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm. And so when, when they come here, the first thing you, you tell them, what is, I mean, you have a program. Yes. Okay, you just. Do you the talk to them yes, on individually? Individually, yes, uh, because uh, everyone is an individual. They all have their own personal history and habits. So I have to communicate with them as a person. Yeah. And then they learn to like slowly understand, you know, here we are not just uh, theorizing, but we are actually uh, trying to get answers to um, life. Yeah, in life in many sense, because if our uh, selfhood is not there, the potential is not there, what we put out is less, and then the struggle is more, yes. you know? Yes. The, the, if the psychology is damaged, the struggle is frighteningly a lot. If the psychology is healthy, the struggle in life is less. So this, all this I try to teach them, not only the asanas. The asanas, we focus a lot, we do every day. Yeah. <laughs> How many hours? <laughs> like uh, morning three hours and evening three hours. <laughs> 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 because they don't give me time, they come here to just uh, with for one month, three months. Yeah, so I mean, you just need to work it I out. I need to work it out, <laughs> yes. Don't be lazy. Yeah, yeah okay. yes. 
But, if they, but we also talk a lot on the philosophy. We also talk more on the health. We talk about um, Ayurveda, all this kind of st stuff with the Chinese medicine, yeah. all these kind of things. So all, all your di uh, dis uh, disciples are also following a particular diet or mean you give some indication about diet? Well, my real advice is... Is the man is supposed to be vegetarian or non-vegetarian? No, no, it's not true. In India itself, there are many, many yoga cultures which are not vegetarian. You know, the Dalai Lama is a classical example of a Buddhist master and yeah. he's not a vegetarian. He's not vegetarian. Yes, and so it's not a very important facet, you know. If it was the only thing... It's not important. Not, it's not, so not, important. not that important. Because if it was the only thing, then the whole world would have been vegetarian. Yeah. You know? Yes. It's not so. And uh, in even South India, like the Tamil Nadu, there are tantrics and yogis who are meat eaters. You know, they eat goat. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not like that. I try to encourage them f uh, to eat healthy ways. Healthy. Healthy ways. Healthy. It doesn't matter if it is vegetarian or non-vegetarian, yes. but to be healthy. A very balanced diet. To balance the yes. diet, protein, carbs, yes. Rate, yes. the body needs. Exactly. And at the same time, I understand the concepts of Ayurveda, the Rajas, Tattvas, Sattvas and Tamas and all these, but they are complicated uh, ideologies. Yeah. So after understanding that, I encourage them to have a balanced diet. and. With this balanced diet, I have a very simple thing I want to say to the whole world. Yeah. <laughs> it's not what you eat, it is what you do. <laughs> if you, if you, if you, if you, yes, if you do and have an active life, your metabolism is always yes, active. It's burning, yeah. Yes, it's the metabolism that makes us uh, um, whatever we look like, yeah. you know. And the metabolism has to be regulated. And that's why yoga is very nice, because it is not like uh, muscular. Yeah. It's not dependent on dumbbells yeah. or something, but it is about metabolism. How to maintain all your prana, your hormones. Yeah. Your hormones maintain your well-being. So all these uh, subtle, subtle aspects are inside the idea of yoga. And this is what I try to encourage them to look at from uh, these perspectives, so that they don't just Take it obsessed Obs with yeah. uh, the diet. Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, yes. Obsession is obsession, whether diet or sex or anything, money. So we try to make them free of obsessions. And Do you agree with uh, what Osho was saying? Don't take it so seriously. Yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes, yes, because. Like kind of sort of a joke. A it play, is, it play. is, because the, he is right in many ways, because. Um, if you take it too seriously, you're just merely intellectualizing. And intellectualism doesn't take you very far no, from your eyes. No. <laughs> <laughs> <Just> <laughs> what you yeah, see just is just what you... Is <laughs> so there is years, there is, uh, you know... The maybe a nice girl is passing by. Uh, you don't see. Nice <laughs> man is passing by, but you are very intellectual and you go on reading, you know? It's, uh, it's more on the unconscious. We miss the idea of the unconscious when we intellectualize. Yeah. In science, we know that... Uh, 10% of the mind is the conscious mind, and that's all that is capable of intellectualism. 90% of the mind is unexplored, and that's what Tantra and Yoga is trying to take us to, the 90%, not the 10%. So here I try to tell them, please don't focus on the 10%, try to go into the 90%, let go of the 10%, yes. like this. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, also because some scientists all now, nowadays, they are saying also that to become enlightened, yes. okay, yes. is just to ras rationalize your unconscious. Sure. I mean, to bring up your unconscious and put it on the aware side. Sure. There, there we talk about enlightenment. Sure, sure. There are two, two schools on the, the idea of enlightenment. It's, uh, it's funny. The school that comes from the German philosophers like uh, Schopenhauer, uh, Kant, and then even Bradley Hegel Heg and all these guys, up to um, Nietzsche. Nietzsche, all this, and then especially uh, Emmanuel Kant, um, they divided the world into two bits, one the nomena and the external the phenomena. The transformation, inner transformation that uh, this uh, Theosophical Society was talking about, um, Gurdjieff, they were talking yeah. about, yeah. all these are based on uh, Emmanuel Kant's ideas and that there is an external world and an internal world. Yeah. And what they call enlightenment is a transformation of emotions and uh, ideas, and then it becomes enlightened. Right. 
but the traditional schools, like all of them, Islam, Christianity, um, Torah, the uh, Israeli yeah. work, um, Buddhism, um, Vedic cultures in India, the Taoist cultures, all of them, they take enlightenment in the process of like the absolute and the finite. So anything that is identified with the finite, they don't consider it as... Uh, that is much better. <laughs> <laughs> That's much better. So for them... Uh, if you are still separated from the infinite, yes, you are not enlightened. It's not enlightened, <laughs> yes. You have to drop the ego. Yes, you, you drop, drop that you are. That's right, right, exactly. So they think much that better. you have to be omni, omni... Like you have to identify with the absolute completely. Yeah. And I, like you say, it's you really... Drop in the sea. Yes, yes, theory, yes, right. yes, right. exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay, yes. it was very nice to talk to you. Nice talking to you. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.